Hi everyone, this is Steve Huff from Iron Shield Arms. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk about some of the weapons that you may be familiar with in the Dungeons & Dragons world. But then look at what are the actual real historical counterparts. The first one we're going to look at is what's generally referred to as a longsword. Now, in the D&D world, a longsword is generally this single-handed, long-bladed, double-edged cutting weapon. Um, and growing up as a kid, being an avid gamer myself, this was always what I pictured when I thought longsword. And it could be varying lengths, generally a little bit longer. But in reality, historically speaking, the longsword is this weapon here. It was a two-handed weapon, long blade, light enough to be used one-handed, but really ideally suited for two. Um, now what's funny is in D&D terms, this would be referred to as a brawl sword. Although historically speaking, a brawl sword is totally different. Um, and even in the entertainment industry, a lot of times this has been referred to as a brawl sword. But in reality, this is what a long sword really would be. Swords like this are nowhere near as heavy as people think. Anywhere from three to four pounds is the average. Uh, you see films like uh, Conan with Arnold Schwarzenegger where he had that huge sword which was specifically made heavy um, so you know, his muscles would rip a while he was swinging and all of that. But realistically, they're a lot lighter. They're very quick. And this is one of the older known systems of fencing uh, in Western martial arts. All right, so I'm going to have Damien Gerard help me out here. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you guys some typical long sword techniques. Now, with it being a two-handed weapon, we'll assume guards that allow us to use this weapon to its most maximum efficiency. When you hear the term fighting stances or guards and all that, the term on guard means to come on guard. A guard is simply a position that puts the body in optimal positioning to move and or attack. So, we're here and I'm in kind of a low guard, Damien's there in a middle guard, and he's going to give me this attack one, even for that shoulder. I meet his blade blocking, but I don't really want to stop his force altogether because then that slows the action. What I do is I rotate and let it pass and make a counter cut to the side of his head. A little quicker, that looks like this. He comes in, I move my body, and that allows his momentum to keep going, making it harder for him to then redirect his action. These can also be used for thrusts. He makes that same attack, I meet out here thrust into the body. Because I'm moving my body back and positioning my feet, I have the leverage to where I can stop even a strong attack without worrying about my arms coming down. Notice my blade is right in that position. I can just take that thrust right into his chest. As he falls back, I can continue with that cut around there. The wide grip allows for a lot of dynamic actions and quick blade manipulations, even for a longer uh, weapon like the long sword. Now we're first going to look at again what in D&D terms would be a long sword but historically speaking just a side sword or arming sword or again just simply a sword. Um, a lot of times these are used in conjunction with a buckler so this is a buckler for those of you that are curious what a buckler looks like. Um, it could be used with a dagger. The Italians were particularly fond of sword and dagger. Um, it could even be used with a larger round shield, like this kind, which is just strapped in the back and held on the arm, or any one of several different shield designs. It's actually very well balanced, nice and quick in the hands, ideally suited for thrusting and cutting. Just like with the long sword, it's all about body manipulation and moving and setting up those angles of attack and defense. Let's look at that same attack he did with the longsword on this angle one here, and you'll see I've got different options. He comes in with that attack. I meet, and I come down. Again, because I've angled my body out of the way, it allows me to get inside his distance and land this attack right to his head. I can go on the offensive. If I see him in that guard there, I can attack down into his weapon and bring that around here and get that thrust. Okay, stay in the guard. I can also attack and come right in, knocking this blade out of the line. Because I've got the buckler, that allows me to move it around. Now, sword and buckler fighting starts to influence sword and dagger fighting, 
especially with the Italians, where the Germans keep it mainly here, the Italians start to separate it. That would look like this. He comes in with that same attack, and I need to here to knock it to the side and counter. He can come in with this low attack here, and I can move there and go counter and do anything else. So again, it's a very quick, dynamic fighting style. Paired with another weapon, either a dagger or a buckler or even a larger shield, a sword like this becomes highly effective. It can be used single-handedly as well. I just have to really board the body. He comes in, and they get attacked, and I come around. Again, notice I'm going for glancing, redirecting defenses rather than hard, static blocks. Number one, does less damage to the blade. Number two, it makes it harder for my opponent to counter if his, mo if his movement is redirected rather than stopped. 